Today we've been asked a question regarding how do you deal with merchant chargebacks in Xero. So it's a little bit of a process but we'll step you through it step by step. First what is a merchant chargeback? So for the viewers out there who accept credit card payments from their clients, occasionally a client may dispute that with the bank which will result in the bank deducting the amount of that dispute from your next merchant payment. So this can get quite complicated particularly where you deal with a lot of merchant transactions that cover multiple invoices. So, And that's the scenario we're going to look at today. So first up we're going to look at how would you normally apply a merchant payment. So most people will have a standard bank account that goes in. In this case we've chosen the business bank account. And if we scroll to the next page you'll see that here on the 30th of November we've got a deposit from our merchant facility. So usually you just go in and match that to a variety of transactions um, or accounts receivable that relates to. So this particular thousand dollars we know that $234 of that relates to an amount from the Bayside Club. We know that a further 500 and this is the transaction by the way that's in dispute um, relates to Brunswick Pedals. So we'll just select that and then we've got 266 from ABC Furniture and we'll select that. So everything turns green indicating that our, our balance was selected, the, the balance of the invoices we selected matches the, the amount of our deposit and we would select OK. So that's how we would take up a standard merchant receipt. So as previously mentioned the, the amount in dispute was at $500 for Brunswick Pedals. So if we scroll down further you'll see that the, um, on the 3rd of December we received another merchant payment of $1,500. The complicating factor with that one is it's actually made up of three different receipts minus that $500 from Brunswick Pedals that was a chargeback. So the bank has deducted that from our merchant facility. So obviously we need to apply, so the total amount of that receipt, if it wasn't for the chargeback, should have been $2,000. So we need to apply that $2,000 against the three invoices to which it relates. But the problem is, how do we deal with the 500 shortfall that's occurred because of that chargeback? So the next step is we need to enter a transaction to be able to to be able to reconcile off that that $1,500 amount. So what we'll need to do is to go in. We're in the business bank account here. Is to create a spend money. So we go up to manage account, click on spend money. So this is where we're going to record the chargeback. So the chargeback was in relation to uh, was it uh, Brunswick Pedals. So we scroll down, find Brunswick Pedals. We'd enter in the date of that chargeback, so in this case it was the 3rd of December 16. The amount was $500. So description, I'd put in something like credit or credit card chargeback or merchant chargeback or something similar to that and total of $500. Now you get to the account, which account should you put it to? Because this is an in and out transaction, it doesn't really affect your sales, there's no tax consequences on it. We'd usually use a suspense account. If you have a lot of merchant chargebacks, you might want to create a separate clearing account that's just called merchant chargebacks or something similar. But generally you'll have suspense or some other type of clearing account. And so we'll put it to that to that account. So we click that, save. So now we should be able to reconcile that transaction in the business bank account. So if we go back to the reconciliation screen, Scroll down to the next page, find that $1,500 amount, and now we need to apply that $1,500 amount to the various invoices in which it belongs. So again, we'll just click on match, a bit like we did earlier. Again, from the merchant statement, I'll know the various items it belongs to. So first one's uh, 4 95 to Cubeland. There's 914.55 to basket case and then 590.45 to Boom FM. Now you'll notice that we haven't gone green at this stage because the total of our items is $2,000 and we're out by 500 being the amount of the chargeback. So we just need to click up here on show spent items and once we do that we should find that if we type in the $500 amount the amount there for Brunswick Pedals that we just entered as being the chargeback is there. So we click on that, everything turns green and we can reconcile that. And done. Okay, so now that we've taken up the chargeback, 
what we need to do is enter in a corresponding transaction to, to get rid of that amount in our clearing account. Obviously clearing accounts only work when you put an amount there but you also put the clearing amount in. So so what is that amount? What we need to do is you know, we've recorded when we originally received that amount against the invoice. Well, that invoice now is still outstanding. So we need to reverse that, which we'll do shortly. But first, we need to take up the amount of that original receipt that we got that was now being taken back off us and we've, and we've taken with, up with that spend money. So in that case, again, we'll be in our main trading account wherever our merchant deposits are. This time, we'll go into the receive money. We know that the amount was from um, Brunswick Pedals, so we'll select that. Uh, the date was the 30th of November that we had the original amount of that payment. Sorry. And it was $500. So again, I'd put in something in my description like merchant chargeback or merchant... Uh, well, it's not, that wasn't the chargeback, I guess it was the uh, deposit. Whatever the description makes sense to you. Um, unit price $500. Again, to get rid of that clearing amount, we need to put it to suspense. There'll be no GST on it because it is just in a clearing amount. And we'll click save. So what we now need to do is that that original $500 that was deposited wasn't really payment of the invoice because it was subsequently credited back. We need to apply it against that um, receive money that we've just done. So how do we do that? We go up to accounts and into sales. We need to find that amount from Brunswick Pedals and change how that was applied. So if we go down here and click on our paid invoices, you'll see here that Brunswick Pedals is listed as having been paid. So we need to click on that. You'll see there's a payment there. Click on the payment and it shows the various amounts that have been allocated there. So what we'll need to do is to remove and redo that so what that's going to do is is take out that transact the very first transaction we did in the video and we're going to reapply it so if we go back to our um, reconciliation screen and we'll need to scroll through to the second page you'll see that the thousand dollars deposit that we we reconciled originally has come back and that was what we did by that remove and redo so we need to go and match that again so if we scroll down to our match screen, again it was still 234 for the Bayside Club. It was 266 for ABC Furniture. And then $500 for Brunswick Pedals. Now you'll see here that there's two amounts listed for Brunswick Pedals. The first one you'll see is identified with this little arrow. If you hover over it, it tells you it's a sales invoice. Well that was the invoice that was originally issued and we want to leave that there for now. The second one is a, a bank transaction. So that is the received money we've just entered and the amount that we've put through to our suspense account. So if we click on that, again, everything turns green and we can match it to that. So that takes care of the two different merchant deposits and we clear that up. We've put a transaction back into each side of our clearing account. So our clearing account will now balance back to zero. The question is, what about the outstanding invoice? Well, that I guess this is a decision that needs to be made at that point in time and it will depend on the reason for the chargeback. So why was it the Brunswick Pedals ordered the chargeback? Was it that it was incorrectly done or was it just an error that they didn't understand that perhaps um, that was the, you know, that, that you were the vendor that they were paying? So if the invoice is still a valid invoice and you're still expecting payment by another means or subsequent payment through the merchant facility, we're done. That's all you need to do. The Brunswick Pedals invoice still shows there as outstanding and you can apply your normal debt collection procedures to it. If, however, uh, Brunswick Pedals ordered a, a chargeback because of, you know, the goods arrived damaged or whatever other reason it might be that, you know, it was felt that, you know, they weren't liable for that, that amount. Well, what we can do then is issue a credit on that, on that invoice. So to do a credit, again, we'll just go up to accounts and sales. We click on all the ones that are awaiting payment because remember we removed the payment from the original invoice so it's gone from being paid to now waiting for payment. We scroll down, we'll see that there's that $500 for Brunswick Pedals. So we can click on that invoice and under the invoice options will be one to add a credit note. 
there are a couple other ways you can issue a credit note. In this instance, it's probably the best way because what it does is take that invoice, basically mirrors it in reverse so that um, it'll um, do the exact same treatment on your sales side and everything else. So in this case, we'd want to change the date to the date of the, the chargeback or whatever date you're, you're issuing the credit note. Um, you can see there and then also automatically apply it to that invoice. So if we click approve on that, invoice is done, you can see that, that we're back now to the original Brunswick Pedals invoice. See there, credit note's been applied, so the balance is due is zero. That removes it from our accounts receivable and we're done. Hope you found that helpful. If you've got any other questions, please feel free to leave a note in the comments. We'd love to hear what you guys want to know about. And if you've got any comments about the video or anything, you know, you'd like clarified, by all means, please share your comments. Thanks for watching.